As the YouTube community has banded together to share Sin City Outdoors video on this guy's beached houseboat due to dropping water levels and a not working engine, ultimately resulting in Heavy D's heartwarming recovery of Craig's boat, it has brought a lot of attention to the growing issue of Lake Mead and Lake Palace dropping water levels, which not only provide water to 25 million households between California, Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico, but also electricity to over 5.8 million homes. Now, before we jump into the current situation and what our government is planning to do, let's take a step back and see the full picture and history of these lakes. Lake Mead and the damming of the Colorado River was done in 1938 after the construction of the Hoover Dam, causing the evacuation of several communities on the outskirts of Las Vegas. One of these communities was called St. Thomas, and due to the dropping water levels, it actually surfaced in 2002 after nearly 60 years underwater. And this was all done in order to regulate water coming from the Colorado River. Previous to the Hoover Dam, the snowmelt in the spring would cause severe flooding, and then the river would run dry during the summer months, which was an issue for growth in the southwest. In order to further regulate water into Lake Mead, Glen Canyon Dam was built upstream from 1953 to 1966, creating Lake Powell in the process. Since its construction, Glen Canyon Dam provides 8.23 million acre-feet of water into Lake Mead each year, but roughly 9 million acre-feet of water flow out of Lake Mead for delivery to California, Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico, resulting in an annual deficit of about 800,000 acre-feet. Now, not only is this a great time to tell you what an acre foot is, but also to tell you if you're enjoying this video to like and subscribe. Typically, my videos are on my inflatable boat or rebuilding my dirt bike engines, but I thought this issue was important to raise awareness for, and hopefully I can answer some questions on this issue. So if you want to raise awareness on this issue, make sure to leave a like or comment so the algorithm knows this is worth watching. Anyway, what is an acre foot? So an acre foot is the amount of water you need to have to have one foot in height of water over a distance of one acre. Now that we've covered a bit of the history, let's get into some of the facts surrounding the current situation, and then we'll jump into what our government has planned to combat some of these issues. So one of the first facts that most people are pretty aware about is that we are experiencing a mega drought in the Southwest. Um, but one thing that you might not be aware about is that for the first time in 2014, Glen Canyon Dam or Lake Powell wasn't able to provide the required 8.23 million acre feet of water. So it wasn't able to meet that minimum level for the first time. And additionally, we hit the lowest level in Lake Mead since 1963, which was when we were actually filling Lake Powell. So we were diverting the water to Lake Powell, causing Lake Mead to have a lower level back then. This is not so much the case now. Now, since 2014, the water level has fluctuated up and down due to above average snowfall in the Rockies. But this last June, the level was actually 1,047 feet, which is the lowest level since Lake Mead opened up in 1937. The most concerning aspect of this might be that that level is about 40 feet lower than the Bureau of Recreation predicted only two years earlier. And they are now predicting water levels will drop to 10,038 feet by this September and another 18 feet by September of 2023. Now, what does this mean for the people in the Southwest? Well, of January of this year, we have entered a tier one shortage, which I mean mandatory water cuts that are primarily affecting agriculture and Arizona as a whole, with them currently experiencing an 18% water cut on its 2.6 million acre foot allotment out of Lake Mead. And if Lake Mead remains below 1,050 feet, a tier two shortage will go into effect, which would bump that water cut from 18% to 21% for Arizona. In order to prevent entering a tier two shortage, the federal government is looking at these three states, California, Nevada, and Arizona to cut their consumption up to 4 million acre feet by this August and maintain these lower usage levels. But there's little progress being seen by the biggest consumer of this water, California. Currently, California is not mandated to cut its water usage and is elected to take its full 4.4 million acre foot allotment of water from Lake Mead for 2022. Now, this might seem selfish at first, but this is mainly due to California's inability to provide enough water via rainfall and snowmelt. Currently, the state water project that manages these resources generated in California announced that water allocations would be reduced down from 15% all the way down to 5%. 
So although it appears selfish for California to take the full allotment, it appears that they really needed it in order to have a fighting chance of not enacting mandatory water restrictions. Currently, as a San Diego resident, I don't think people here are well aware of this issue, and many of those who are aware have only recently become aware due to the actions of several YouTubers. So if the government is not educating people, then what are they doing? Well, in December of 2021, the 500 plus plan was signed, which is an agreement between three states and the Department of the Interior, or the federal government, to prevent Lake Mead from dropping low 1,020 feet or 35% capacity. Now this is only about 20 feet above the minimum level to produce any electricity, below 1,000 feet, and we lose the ability to produce electricity at the Hoover Dam. And in this agreement, the states are going to incentivize businesses and people in general to use less water. So upgrading water usage systems to be more efficient seems to be the big idea and they have budgeted $200 million for it, which doesn't seem like a lot of money, but Arizona will chip in 60 million for their 2.6 million acre foot allotment. Nevada will chip in 20 million for their 300 acre foot allotment. And California will chip in 20 million feet for their 4.4 million acre foot allotment. And the federal government will contribute another 100 million. Now, I don't understand how or why this was broken down and how California and Nevada pay the same, but California gets 4.1 million acre feet more and Arizona pays triple California, but gets half as much water. It seems though that Arizona politicians are really screwing over their residents as they have subsidized land for foreign owned farms and provide them with free water while also enacting water shortage cuts on their own residents who are forced to foot the bill of this new agreement along with all the free water to these foreign farms. Hopefully they're getting some nice backdoor payments for their hard work. Either way, I'm not sure 200 million goes far these days and I'm pretty sure most of that money will go towards farmers to implement systems to use less waters as they are the big consumers. Who knows, maybe some of it will go towards these foreign owned farms in Arizona. So with education lacking and the 500 plus plan not providing a high confidence level and only 47 feet until we can no longer produce power from the Hoover Dam, what else is the federal government doing? Well, they're sending 500,000 acre feet from Flaming Gorge Dam on the Wyoming, Utah border. Now this initially comes off as a relief package, but it's really just a water swap as the Fed is not sending the agreed upon 480,000 acre feet from Lake Powell to Lake Mead. This action is mainly to prevent Glen Canyon Dam from dropping low 3,490 feet and also reaching what's called the minimum power pool where you can no longer generate power. Now, I wouldn't see the federal government letting Lake Powell drop below that level to produce any electricity, so in order to prevent that, they would most likely redirect water from other reservoirs to Lake Powell to quite literally keep the lights on but this would have impacts on those smaller communities relying on these smaller sources. Now, if we play the situation game and say that these smaller networks of reservoirs can't save Lake Powell or Lake Mead from hitting that minimum power level, it's not that all these people that it provides electricity to would be in the dark, it's just that they would be paying a lot more in order to keep the lights on, which isn't great, but it wouldn't immediately cause mayhem and craziness. Personally, I believe that climate change is real as there's always a reaction for an action, and we have done a number to this planet over the last 100 years. And based on climate change predictions coming right from our government's EPA, the Southwest is supposed to get warmer and drier, but the Northern states are predicted to receive more rain than they currently get, so perhaps some big infrastructure projects can divert some of this extra waters to the areas drying up. Another option would be desalination. As technology advances, perhaps we could do it more efficiently, and with a zero carbon impact. Overall, we know our government isn't fast acting and will probably make some missteps in the process of figuring this out. So the best thing we could do besides personally conserve water is to put pressure on politicians to focus water conservation efforts on the largest offenders of consumption and crack down on any sweetheart deals previously given out like the Saudi owned alfalfa farms in Arizona instead of focusing on water usage restrictions on our residents. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, make sure to check out some of my inflatable boat videos in case you are interested in seeing if an inflatable boat is right for you.